This lecture, Canada Goes to War, will investigate the early contributions made by Canada to the war effort. Robert Borden. In the 1911 election, Prime Minister Wilfrid Laurier, the first French-Canadian Prime Minister, was defeated. Robert Borden, leader of the Conservative Party, was elected. He would lead Canada through the challenging times faced during World War I. Canada enters the war. When Germany invaded Belgium, Britain declared war on Germany August 4, 1914. Britain had always promised to defend Belgian independence. Canada was therefore automatically at war with Germany as well. Britain still made many decisions on behalf of Canada as a result of their historical connections. Canadian leaders were quite unified in their support of Britain, although over the course of the war opposition would rise in Quebec. Canada's first contributions. Prime Minister Robert Borden established the Canadian Expeditionary Force, the CEF. Today, our military is known as the Canadian Forces. Two days after the start of the war, Canada offered Britain a force of 25,000 soldiers. This was quite a commitment considering the population of Canada at this time was only 7 million. Registration for war. In most towns, registration centers were set up in the city center for young men eager to enlist in the war. Adventure and a sense of patriotism drew many young men to enlist. Despite the age requirement of being 18, many enlistees lied about their age. Sam Hughes was Minister of the Militia, responsible for military spending, training and recruitment. Canada's military in 1914 was very limited. Hughes would attempt to mobilize and organize the CEF for the war effort. He would prove to be a very controversial character. Recruitment of soldiers. Within a few days, the recruiting offices were filled with volunteers. Many joined for the following reasons. Number one, sense of patriotism and adventure. They felt a duty to protect Canada. Form of adventure for young men. Number two, slowing Canadian economy. There was limited employment and the military offered a secure job at $1 a day. There was also the illusion that war was glorious and the Germans would quickly be defeated. Victorious troops would be home for Christmas, so they thought. Young men did not want to miss out on this opportunity for glory. Propaganda posters. These posters displayed around towns and in publications attempted to convince Canadians to contribute to the war effort. Young men needed to enlist, the wealthy needed to buy victory bonds, and mothers at home were encouraged to create gardens in their backyards to contribute to the food supply. Take a look at these propaganda posters. What do you think are the main messages? Success of recruitment. Within one week, 10,000 Canadians had volunteered. They volunteered not only as soldiers, but also as engineers, medics, and construction workers. Wealthy Canadians donated money, known as victory bonds, and military supplies. Despite the eagerness of Canadians to contribute, Canada was not well prepared for war. It would take time to organize the CEF into an effective fighting force. Training the troops. Minister of Militia Sam Hughes set up military training camps at Valcarche, Quebec. Over 30,000 troops were trained here before being sent to Britain for further training. The training that soldiers received did not prepare them for the new challenges of fighting in the trenches. Canadian troops leaving for Europe. Following their training, soldiers boarded trains that took them to Halifax from which they would be shipped to Britain. The excitement shown in this image reveals that many Canadians did not understand how horrible the experience of war would actually be. Sam Hughes and the Ross Rifle The Ross Rifle was a good sharpshooting rifle, but once in battle the rifle would become clogged with mud and become useless. Canadian soldiers would often discard their Ross Rifle if they found a Lee Enfield rifle from a dead British soldier. However, Hughes continued to insist that the rifle was fit for battle. Eventually he would be fired by Prime Minister Robert Borden. In Battle in Europe, the Canadian troops fought together under the command of British General Julian Bing. 
By the end of the war, the troops would be led by a Canadian named Arthur Curry. The glorious victories they had imagined soon were replaced with the awful realities of war. The battles of Ypres, the Somme, Vimy Ridge and Passchendaele would be remembered not only for the courage of Canadians, but also for the incredible hardships faced by soldiers.